Maria Cornelia Frederica Rita Verdong is a former Dutch politician. She was a leader of the People's Party for Freedom and Democracy for some time, and later founded a new party, Proud of the Netherlands. In 2011 she retired from politics. She earlier served as Minister for Integration and Immigration in the Cabinets Borkenende 2 and 3. During her time as Minister for Integration and Immigration, she was considered to be the most powerful and influential minister of the Cabinets Borkenende 2 and 3. In 2006 after the Minister of Justice Piet Hein Donner resigned following a Netherlands Safety Board inquiry into a fire at a cell block near Schiphol Airport. She served as Minister of Justice from September 21, 2006 till September 22, 2006. After the Dutch general election of 2006, the People's Party for Freedom and Democracy lost seats. It became the leading opposition party against the cabinet Borkenender IV. Verdonk was elected as a member of the House of Representatives but after continuing disagreement with party leader Mark Rutte. She was expelled from the parliamentary faction of the People's Party for Freedom and Democracy on September 13, 2007. One month later she cancelled her membership, after a reconciliation attempt failed and the People's Party for Freedom and Democracy Party Board initiated a procedure of exclusion. In October 2007, she announced the creation of her own political movement, Proud of the Netherlands. She was the Lidge Strecker of the Proud of the Netherlands Party for the Dutch general election of 2010, but did not win any seats. On October 21, 2011 she announced her retirement from politics. The Proud of the Netherlands Party eventually merged with the Independent Citizens Party of Hero Brinkman to form the new Democratic Political Turning Point Party. This party was described as filling a gap on the political right. Biography Early life Maria Cornelia Frederica Verdonk was born on October 18, 1955 in Utrecht. She attended high school at Utrecht's Niels Stenson College at the Athenaeum level. She went on to study sociology at the Radboud University in Nijmegen, which at the time was considered left-wing, and specialized in the sociology of organizations and criminology. Verdonk was member of a sub-faculty board of the university and a member of the activist group Bond vor Wetsovertreders, which had close ties with the far-left pacifist Socialist Party. Its 1977 manifesto included as the organization's aims to curb in or prevent material damage and immaterial damage inflicted to individuals or groups in our society by the Dutch legal system. The BWO campaigned for reforms such as detainee minimum wages, the abolition of censorship of letters for detainees, and the right to unsupervised visits. The group visited inmates at a local prison and undertook legal interventions on their behalf. Verdonk participated in a non-violent human blockade during the Pearson riots of 1981, when plans for housing demolition to make room for a parking lot triggered violent civil unrest. Because of her activism during this period, she earned the nickname Red Rita after graduating in 1983. Verdonk became a trainee at the Department of Correction at the Ministry of Justice. In 1984, she was promoted to assistant director at the Skeevening and Detention Centre. In 1988, she became a member of the board of the prison, De Shee, in Rotterdam. In 1992, she switched to the Ministry of Justice's Department of Youth and Hospital Orders Institutions where she reached the position of vice director. In 1996, she was appointed as director of the Department of State Security of the Ministry of Interior Affairs. Between 1999 and 2003 she was senior manager, director of the consulting firm KPMG. In 2002 she became a member of the People's Party for Freedom and Democracy to become more active in politics. In a 2006 article, some of Verdonk's friends and colleagues from her Nijmegen days expressed surprise at Verdonk's radical switch in political orientation after graduating in 1983. 
Some observed that Verdonk had never held outspoken left-wing ideals and criticized communist regimes. Others hypothesized that it was part of a growing up phase. A former treasurer of the BWO suspected that Verdonk had been a police informer all those years. Minister for Integration. In 2003, Verdonk was appointed Minister for Integration and Immigration. As a minister, Verdonk enjoyed a rare level of recognition and popularity amongst voters, but was also reviled by many as a populist with an impulsive style of governing. In June 2004 Verdonk was smeared with ketchup by two members of an extreme left organization. After the political murders of politician Pim Fortune in 2002 and film director Theo van Gogh in 2004, the Dutch Ministry of Interior Affairs began to monitor Verdonk's security tightly for her own protection. From June 4, 2008, the Dutch cabinet discontinued the monitoring on the grounds that the threat level had abated. Asylum case of Ayan Hersher Ali earlier in 2006. A TV program had reported that MP Hersher Ali had provided false information on her asylum application in 1992 concerning her name, date of birth in country where she had been residing prior to seeking asylum. Members of her family interviewed for the TV program denied her earlier claims that she had sought asylum to prevent an arranged marriage that she objected to, stating instead that she had agreed to it. A government investigation raised many questions about the veracity of these claims. Based on a ruling by the Hodgerad, Verdonk said that her Ali did not have legitimate Dutch citizenship, according to the Hodgerad, except under very special circumstances. Dutch citizenship could not be granted if the subject had lied about his or her name and date of birth. In a broadcast on the Dutch public network, Hersha Ali had admitted that she had lied about her name and date of birth in her application, and that she had been living with her family for 12 years in Kenya before arriving in the Netherlands, and had not arrived directly from Somalia, which at that time was experiencing civil war. The decision by Verdonk caused considerable controversy. VVD Deputy Prime Minister Zalm said he was surprised that events known for years suddenly resulted in action by Verdonk two days after a television program about her Ali's past. He said Verdonk has disqualified herself from being the prime candidate for the VVD in the coming elections. On May 16, 2006, Ayan Hersher Ali, who was herself an MP for the VVD, as well as Gerrit Zalm, criticized Verdonk for her decision to revoke Hersher Ali's passport. In a session in Parliament on the issue of Hersher Ali's citizenship, Verdonk said that she had no choice but to revoke her passport, as it had been issued under a false name and false date of birth. Some members of parliament suggested that Verdonk's stern actions were a result of her political ambitions in the 2006 VVD leadership elections. The result of the debate was that Verdonk promised to have another look at the case and see if it was possible for her Ali keep her citizenship. On June 27, 2006 Verdonk informed Parliament of her decision to allow MP Ayan Hersher Ali to keep her Dutch passport. According to Verdonk, Hersher Ali had presented her with new convincing evidence related to her use of her grandfather's surname, and the false date of birth was insufficient grounds to cancel her passport. The next day, during a parliamentary debate took place, Minister Verdonk and Prime Minister Jan Peter Borkenender were questioned about the decision. At the end of the first period of the debate, the Prime Minister said that Hersha Ali had to sign a letter accepting responsibility for her false statements in order to retain her citizenship. Otherwise, the solution would not be acceptable for Minister Verdonk. In the second period of the debate, a vote of no confidence was proposed by the Green Party Grainlinks. It was supported by the Balkanender cabinet coalition partner, Democrat 66. 
The vote did not meet the required majority as it was opposed by the right-wing populist LPF. Because a coalition partner supported the motion, a unique situation in Dutch politics, the Borkenende cabinet had to decide if this had consequences for Rita Verdonk as minister, and the second Borkenende cabinet. Van Beek, a MP for the VVD, said after the debate that it would be almost unthinkable that if Verdonk resigned, the cabinet would stay intact. As one, the coalition partners of the cabinet had lost its confidence in the minister. D66, feeling dissatisfied that Minister Verdonk did not resign following the debate, withdrew its support for the cabinet. This resulted in the cabinet's fall on June 29. Outgoing minister on November 30, 2006 the new parliament was sworn in as the result of elections a week earlier. On November 1, Labour Party leader Wouter Boss proposed a motion for what in effect would constitute an amnesty for an estimated 26,000 asylum seekers who had asked for asylum more than five years ago and had their asylum applications turned down. This motion requested of the Cabinet, in anticipation of a definite discussion on the amnesty by the new House of Representatives, not to take any irreversible measures with respect to this group. During her tenure as Minister for Immigration, Verdonk had specifically cited the rejection of those 26,000 persons as an example of her toughening of the immigration laws. The motion was passed with a 75 to 74 majority. The VVD, Prime Minister Borken and CDA, and the right wing PVV and SGP parties dissenting. Both Verdonk, although now considered a caretaker, and Prime Minister Borken and criticized the motion. There was speculation that Verdonk resigned for this reason. On December 3, after several meetings, the cabinet decided not to honor the motion, because an amnesty would be impossible to implement. It agreed to postpone expulsion of asylum seekers until after a special parliamentary session to be held on December 12. During this December 12 session, a motion was proposed by the PVDA asking Verdonk to refrain from acting on expulsions until the new cabinet was formed. This motion was supported by all the left-wing and centre-left parties and it passed with a slim 76-72 majority. Verdonk claimed this motion amounted to a de facto amnesty and affirmed her well-known stance. Any amnesty was unenforceable. She declared expulsions would continue after the debate, before Cabinet could issue an official statement the next day. Verdonk also refused to postpone those expulsions for another 24 hours until a new debate could take place the next day. In reaction, the whole parliament tasked for an official statement from the Cabinet that same evening. Following an additional debate, during which Prime Minister Borkenende said that Verdonk had the full support of the cabinet, a motion of no confidence was accepted by the same coalition of left-wing parties. Before the vote took place, Mark Rutte declared that should Verdonk resign, all VVD ministers would join her. The cabinet was in a 10-hour meeting on December 13 before deciding that all ministers would stay on and that Hirsch Ballen would take over Verdonk's responsibility for immigration. In exchange, Verdonk added Hirsch Ballen's Justice Department responsibilities over youth care, prevention and probation to her portfolio. Hirsch Ballen could execute the December 12 motion started by the PVDA and postpone the expulsions of asylum seekers based on humanitarian grounds such as the responsibility for underage children, until a new cabinet was formed. On February 22, 2007 Verdonk stood down as minister when the fourth cabinet Borkenende was installed. Her portfolios were taken over by Ella Vogelar and Nebahat al -Bayrak. Policy Verdonk's most discussed propositions and decisions are, in order to reduce immigration through marriage, she proposed that partners of Dutch citizens who come from countries outside the EU only be allowed to immigrate into the Netherlands if the Dutch 
partner earns more than 120% of the minimum income. She refused to grant an amnesty to around 26,000 asylum seekers who had their asylum applications turned down but who had been living in the Netherlands for more than five years by that time. Since they had entered the Netherlands before the new foreigner law, it appeared that a special arrangement was required. Instead of an amnesty, Verdonk chose to deal with these thousands of cases individually. To integrate immigrants into the Dutch society, each person who wants to immigrate into the Netherlands must pass an integration test. Except for those who come from other European Union member states, United States, Canada, Japan, Australia and New Zealand. It tests knowledge of the Dutch language, political system and social conventions. The test must be taken before entering the Netherlands, preferably in a Dutch embassy in the person's country of origin. Immigrants coming from an EU state, the United States, Canada, Japan, Australia and New Zealand cannot take this integration test, even if they want to. Outcomers, immigrants who have lived in the Netherlands for a long time, but are not integrated, were requested to take the exam. Verdonk tried to make such tests mandatory also for Dutch nationals who were born and raised outside the Netherlands. The constitutionality of these tests, especially in being applied to outcomers and Dutch nationals, has been questioned both by the Council of State, which advises government on all proposed laws, and various parties in the parliament, including Verdonk's VVD. These proposals were to be implemented in January 2007. Minister Verdonk was called to parliament for the following issues. In October 2005 it was discovered that civil servants of the Immigration and Naturalization Services had informed the Congolese Embassy and authorities that several of the people sent back to the Democratic Republic of the Congo had applied for asylum in the Netherlands. The Congo had long been struggling with civil war. This information is considered confidential and should not have been disclosed to the Congolese authorities. Verdonk at first denied any wrongdoing, but later admitted that she had lied. In several cases, the Congolese embassy had been informed that several returnees had applied for asylum in the Netherlands. According to members of the opposition, this information could put returnees at risk of torture or other oppression, but no party or organization provided documentation for the claim. Verdonk maintained that no other sensitive information was given to the Congolese authorities, in accordance with the findings of a special committee. In December 2005, a cell complex for denied refugees at Amsterdam airport burned down after a fire had been started by one of the refugees. Eleven refugees died. Surviving refugees reported that they had to wait more than 45 minutes before being released from their cells. A man suspected of connections with terrorist organizations had escaped in the disruption. Before the fire's investigation was completed, Verdonk stated that prison workers adequately handled the circumstances. Subsequently, in September 2006, she granted temporary state permits to many of the survivors of the Schiphol Airport Detention Center fire, overriding the regular court hearing procedures. As a minister, Verdonk has proposed the following, which have not become law. In October 2005, a ban on Muslim women wearing the burqa in public places, on the grounds that the burqa, which covers the face, is a security risk since suicide bombers could use it as a disguise. She cancelled a meeting with Dutch Muslim leaders when one would not shake hands with her, because she is a woman. She has said that the time for cozy tea drinking with Muslim groups had passed. In January 2006, she proposed the adoption of a national code of conduct, listing the most important conventions of Dutch society, to facilitate the integration of immigrants. She was inspired by a similar initiative undertaken by the city of Rotterdam. One requirement would be that everyone agreed to speak only Dutch in the streets. Upon receiving Dutch citizenship, immigrants would have to sing the first stanza of the national anthem, the Wilhelmus.
In March 2006, Verdon considered returning homosexual asylum seekers to Iran because she understood they were no longer being prosecuted. The general public conception was that acts of homosexuality were still punishable by death. She noted that homosexuality in itself was not punishable by death sentence in Iran. In response to parliamentary criticism, the minister announced on March 4 that all asylum cases involving homosexual Iranians would be assessed on an individual basis. Her proposed policy initially earned her selection for the Human Rights Watch Hall of Shame. Verdonk strictly applied the Alien Integration Act of 1998, which was introduced by Job Cohen, the Social Democratic State Secretary for Justice in the Carbonate Cock II. Criticism Verdonk's expulsion policies were criticized in the TV series 26,000 Gesichten, in which the personal lives of many of these people were shown, in hopes that public opinion would change when viewers saw that these 26,000 were mostly ordinary, friendly people. In January 2006, Verdonk received the negative Dutch Big Brother Award for promoting privacy violations. In Amnesty International's magazine Word Vervel, Rude Lubbers, a former three-time Prime Minister and UN High Commissioner for Refugees, said that Verdonk should not finish her job, and the Netherlands is in a spasm it would help if we could de Verdonk the situation. In December 2006, Verdonk was elected worst politician by her colleague members of parliament. In a poll by the current affairs television program Ian Van Dag qualified her as an elephant in a China cabinet, ruthless and incompetent. In a similar poll, Ian Van Dag viewers ranked Verdonk in second place on both the best politician and worst politician lists.